This week, we fight crime by pretending to be crime. It's a bit convoluted, but I love the Green Hornet, so it's all good. I get to drive, right? Yep. Just let me check the gas gun. Hmm. Oh. oh my. Wow. Cato really does all the work, doesn't he? The Green Hornet is Britt Reed, owner-publisher of the Daily Sentinel, who fights crime by night with the aid of his valet, Cato, using tools like a gun that fires knockout gas and a souped-up roadster they dub the Black Beauty. By becoming vigilantes, the Hornet and Cato are labeled as outlaws, running from the cops even as they fight criminals. In a unique turn, their status as outlaws actually allows the Hornet and Cato greater access to the criminal underworld. There have been a number of versions of the Green Hornet and his partner Cato, but the first was a 1936 radio series, the first live-action event of the duo took place in the serials The Green Hornet and The Green Hornet Strikes Again. Many fans remember The Green Hornet for the 1966 TV series featuring Van Williams as the Hornet and Bruce Lee as Cato. Interestingly, one of the early Green Hornet episodes implies that the 60s era Hornet's father was the radio version, but this isn't really brought up again. Anyway, this version of The Green Hornet and Cato had their own gas gun, their own gadget-filled black beauty, as well as some cool new tools, including the ultrasonic Hornet Sting, as well as Cato's sleeve darts, throwing darts that gave the expert martial artist a ranged attack. She's throwing darts. Out of my sleeve, but they're short, so I have to go from up here. In the original radio stories, Britt Reed, the Green Hornet, is the grandnephew of John Reed, the Lone Ranger. The two licenses are now held by separate entities, and their stories are generally set at least 50 years apart, so don't expect a crossover just yet. There were a variety of comic book adaptations of the Green Hornet and Cato, most of the early versions of which ran concurrently with the radio and TV series. In 1989, Now Comics acquired the Green Hornet license and began publishing their own take on the Hornet and Cato characters. They based their new Green Hornet series on Legacy, with a fourth Green Hornet, Paul Reed, taking on the mask. Paul is a concert pianist, but when his trained brother Alan is killed, he follows the legacy started by his father and grandfather, each based on the TV and radio versions, respectively. This new Hornet is joined by Misha Mishi Kato, the younger half-sister of the clearly TV series-based version of the character. Due to the demands of the Green Hornet rights holders, Mishi returns the Kato mantle to the Bruce Lee-inspired Hayashi, who later passes it on to his and Mishi's nephew, Kono. Mishi later returns as her own hero, the Crimson Wasp. Kono and Paul battle side by side until the collapse of Now Comics in the early 1990s. Before the close of the Green Hornet line, Now also published the Dark Tomorrow series, which featured the Hornet of 2080 battling against that era's Kato. In 2009, Diamond Entertainment began publishing a wide range of their own Green Hornet titles, including a modernized take by Kevin Smith that followed the Now Comics idea of a Hornet legacy, but simplified it. Hard partying Brit Jr. takes over for the retired Brit Sr. after his murder, aided by Mulan, daughter of the Bruce Lee-based Kato. The 2013 series Masks, also published by Dynamite, combined several of their acquired properties, including Green Hornet, Kato, The Shadow, a new version of Zorro, The Black Bat, and many more into a super pulp team-up written by Chris Roberson with art by Alex Ross and Dennis Calero. In the various versions of the Green Hornet stories, Kato's ethnicity has changed. Sometimes Japanese, sometimes Chinese, sometimes Filipino, sometimes Korean. In fact, there are some occasions where he's one ethnicity disguised as another. It's a whole thing. What Green Hornet story will work best for you is a matter of personal taste. If you like classic 60s camp in the vein of Batman, check out the TV series. If you're really a fan of the 66 Batman, make sure not to miss the two-part Hornet-Batman crossover. If you want a fan-created take on the character, the excellent French fan film Les Frelons Verts is a fun one, but it's basically a fight team demo reel. We figured some of you might be okay with that though, so give it a Google. When it comes to the 2011 movie starring Seth Rogen and Jay Chu, there's a bit of a divide. If you're a fan of director Michel Gondry and the zanier side of Christoph Waltz, you'll love it. If not, maybe skip it. Sadly, the Now Comics run is basically impossible to find, but Dynamite Entertainment is keeping the Hornet alive. If you're a Kevin Smith fan, check out his run. If you're looking for a more pulpy take, check out either Matt Wagner or Mark Wade's pulp-infused comic book runs. Bruce Lee's work in The Green Hornet was extremely popular, rocketing him to movie stardom. Actually, The Green Hornet TV series was colloquially known in Hong Kong as The Kato Show. Would you be The Green Hornet, or would you be Kato? Let us know in the comments below, and remember to subscribe for more Geek Crash Course. Until next week, if you have any questions or tips on bad guys, you can find us on Twitter, Facebook, and our website, geekcrashcourse.com. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time on, on Geek, Geek Crash, Crash Course. Course. All right, here we go. Oh, don't, don't, don't.
No, I'm pretty sure I've got all the kinks worked out. Look. Oh, jeez. She's throwing darts. Out of my sleeve, but they're short, so I have to go from up here. They're like all the way up in here, probably. You could say he had something up his sleeve. <laughs> Get out. I will. <laughs>